This episode of Gamerheads is brought to you by Magic Mind, the healthy energy drink that will help you take your creativity to a new level. Hi, I'm Celia Schilling from Yacht Club Games. Hey, this is James from Mega Cat Studios. Hey, this is Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon, from Reignite, Screen Snark, and the Fun and Games podcast. This is Stephanie from the Boss Rush podcast and the Boss Rush Network. Hey, this, this is Mark, Mark and Keon from Bonta Affold. Hey, this is Sebastian with the ProNerdReport.com and the Single Player Experience podcast. Hi, this is Chris. Mike. And Garrett from Daylight Basement Studio. Hey, this is Baron J67 from Level 1 Gaming. Hey, this is Todd Mitchell from Code Right Play. Salutations. This is Mike Carroll from Stroll Art. Hey, this is Jeff Moonen from Fun and Games Podcast. Hey, this is Patrick from the Backlog Odyssey. Hey, this is Rune from Runic Codes. Hi, this is Andrew from Spalato Bros. Hi, everyone. Jill Grote here from The Indie Informer. Hey, this is Brimstone, and you're listening to Roger Reichardt on the Gamer Heads Podcast. And welcome to another episode of the Gamerheads Podcast. My name is Roger. Along with me is my good friend, the CEO and president. Let's see if we can get your music playing. There we go. It is. Phil! I'm just going to vibe with this. I haven't heard it in a couple of weeks. I gotta say that I am super stoked to be back here on Gamerheads. I have also learned a couple. <laughs> you're of... on other podcasts or what? Uh, no, like... I actually haven't been on another podcast. It's just that I've been. I, 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 I think you guys may have disclosed where I was, and yeah. I got a couple of things to say about when you're attempting oh. to go to a uh, to a software studio or a software development company, and you're attempting to steal their product. <laughs> the good move to do is not to steal hard disks. But when you're smuggling them out, steal them when they're floppy, because when they're hard, they're a lot more difficult to get in and out of where you're trying to smuggle them from. Uh-huh. In okay. The prisons in Maine, Maine is an absolutely yeah. beautiful state, but those prisons yeah. are god awful. You're filled with a bunch of people oh. that are all about the forest and the trees and just oh. a bunch of happy naturalist people. Like you're stuck with a bunch of protesters who have chained themselves to trees to prevent them getting cut down. <laughs> and they're all wearing hay mans. As, as I like to call, like a poncho is a hay man because okay, anybody who wears a poncho okay. says hay man. Oh, okay. I and, didn't know that either. Wow, these are things I didn't know. The worst part is that there's still beer snobs in prison, so they don't even brew like bad oh, beer in the toilet. Yeah. They try to brew like IPAs in the toilet, and they're not very good. <laughs> oh, uh, we may have noticed that Mike's not here this week. Phil, what, a- what happened? To- what happened well, to Mike? Mike came to bail me out, but he was running a little bit behind schedule. And I already gotten out, and unfortunately, they kept my cell phone when I got out of prison. Okay. But it turns out Mike has got some unpaid warrants in Maine. Oh. And so from oh, no. what I understand, because I was reading the Portland Gazette, uh-huh. that they, they caught Mike at one of the fine breweries in Portland, Maine, and they <laughs> locked him up. <laughs> What was he doing at a brewery? I don't know. He was probably on the lam once he realized. He was probably looking for me once he discovered I was out, is my guess. He's like, well, where am I going to find Phil at now that he's out of the clink? Yeah. And he's like, well, yeah. I should probably go check the breweries because Phil yeah. likes to drink. Yeah, because yeah, he liked to drink, yeah. Turns out that there was uh, a cop there that was like, Mr. Mister Mike, you got to come with us. You have done some shady stuff here in Maine, and it's time for you to pay your due. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't, I'm well, not going to go try to bail him out because I'm not sure that I'm in the free and clear. So, I mean, if you want to go try to snag Mike <laughs> from Maine, that's all on you. Well, uh, you know, it's funny that you say that, though, because uh, last – no, two weeks ago, because we had off last week because of Thanksgiving. You guys were all safe and sound. It was great. You guys were home. and and But the week before that, Mike was telling me how he had to dig himself out of a prison – uh, cause he was on a mission too, but you guys, you guys, I sent you guys out on missions. You guys take it way to the extreme. Why do you, why do you do that? Uh, you know, we're live and die by the podcast. We're going to do anything we can to That's get, to, to get the inside scoop. Yeah. I and guess. unfortunately inside so. means inside and behind bars in my case. And now unfortunately <laughs> in Mike's case. Well, we're not sure. We're not sure about it. His outstanding warrants. I don't think that was podcast related. I think that was something else. I don't know. We're not sure. We don't know. We don't know. What, anyway, what happens in Maine well, stays in Maine until you get released. 
that he talk about a, on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the show. Welcome to our patrons, Jill, Matt, and Sarah. Thank you so much for your support of the podcast. We appreciate it. Listeners, if you want to join Gamerheads Nation, you can do so by going to our link in the show notes, and it's uh, patreon.com slash gamerheads. And for as little as $3 a month, you can join the Gamerheads Nation and help support this show. So thank you so much for those that support us. We're definitely thankful for our Patreons. We are. We are. But so speaking so of much. thankful, Roger. Yeah. How was your Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, I should. Oh, yeah. I should talk about that. Uh, That's why so I just was, asked you about it. I set you yeah. up. <laughs> uh so it was interesting uh Uh, so what it went well uh until like about nine o'clock and all of a sudden my son who has uh allergic reaction to food he he has a dairy allergy so uh he came into the kitchen and he was like hey my lip is puffy and it was swollen and i was like oh no and he had a little bit of wheeze so I should have at that point realized that he was, I mean, I knew he, I, I thought he was having a large reaction. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Right. Because like we we're, we're really careful about making sure he doesn't get any dairy. Yeah. Um, but I think there was some cross contamination. Who yeah. knows? Uh, so uh, I said, well, let's take him to the hospital. Let's take him to ER. And, you know, we got there and they're like, did you give him, we have an EpiPen. And like, did you give him, the epinephrine and i said well we didn't because i wasn't 100 percent sure because like it was just again we are super careful about his food and yeah. i was like i wasn't 100 percent sure if it was a allergic reaction i just didn't know if maybe there was something else i don't know uh of course they're like well we're gonna give him a shot so he gives him the, <laughs> he gives him the shot of the epinephrine you know he's 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 nine so or he's eight sorry he's he he's gonna turn nine and he was like, oh, that really hurts. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and then it doesn't stop there, though. They're like, we need to give him an IV for medicine. Oh, and I was boy. like, oh, no. So they put in his first arm. And, of course, that was not fun. And he said, it's hurting. It hurts a lot. It hurts a lot. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm just laughing because his reaction next. So the nurse is looking at it. And they're like, yeah, I don't know if it's right. I think we have to go to the other arm. And oh, then he's geez. like, you know, actually, it feels fine. It's, <laughs> it's, it actually feels really good. Totally I think good. you should just leave it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're like, no, sorry. So then, of course, he's like having, you know, he's like, I, I, I don't want this. To, like, like, can we just go home? And I, you know, look at him and I'm like, listen, buddy, if you can get through this, right, I will let you play as much video games as you want on Friday, right? As much as you want. He's like, you promise? And I said, I promise. And he's like, will you also buy me a big stuffed animal? Fine. I'll buy you a big stuffed animal. <laughs> and so uh, the next day he played Marvel Spider-Man oh, like nice. all day. And he is now up to the part where I now he doesn't do any side missions. Right? right. So, but he's up to the part in the story where I am. And I'm like, Hmm. Uh, that's a lot of playing <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my, uh, that was my Thanksgiving. That's a, yeah. that's pretty eventful. And it sounds like it ended up being kind of expensive at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I haven't got the bill yet from the hospital either. So that's also, uh, it's not, uh, it's not too late way. to move. I, re- I don't recommend Maine <laughs> though. <laughs> How was your Thanksgiving? I was delightful. I went over to my good friend Andy's house, and he and I hung out, and we made ginormous porterhouse steaks and a bunch oh, of those like so good mashed potatoes. Dude, they were massive. Uh, oh my god! Some mashed potatoes, some baked carrots, and some sautéed onions and uh, mushrooms. And we sat down and Oof. crushed it, and had a couple of cocktails, and then did what we do, and we played some Overwatch, sitting in the same room together on two different TVs. Oh, fun! That sounds like fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Very uh, peaceful. Very chill. Yeah, they'll stick. I mean, you sent us pictures, and I was like, oh, my God, those look amazing. Yeah, I don't mess around um, with turkey. Turkey's super overrated. The only reason people eat it is because of Thanksgiving. <laughs> so if I get the opportunity where it's just myself and, like, a very, very small group of people, I'm like, why would we do turkey and we can do something that we want to eat year-round and not just one yeah, day a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it works out no, pretty I all right. Uh, I did smoke a turkey this year. That was the I first time I ever tried that. I smoked a lot of stuff, but no turkeys. <laughs> 
uh, I put it on my little uh, my little bullet smoker, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it turned out fantastic. How long did it I take? I was really surprised. Six hours. That's not too bad. Yeah, actually, I think I was I was done by five, but I was just like, oh, I just want to make sure. Like, and I will say this, Phil. Like, I was all worried because you know I put I put like a seasoning rub on it, mm-hmm. and and then what I was doing was I would I would take. Uh, chicken broth and just make sure like i'm yep. like just basting, you know, it, basting kind of. it yeah, yeah. Um, but then i also took uh apple cider and apple cider vinegar and squirted that as well on the yeah. crust or on the skin to make it nice and crisp right yeah. and when i pulled it up it was like really black and i was like oh no, no i like just I, the skin it's just the skin and it was oh my god we ate it i was like oh my and then the gravy i made the gravy from oh my god nice. it was and you so got that good. smoky gravy drippings yeah yeah did you uh, did you put anything in between so the good. skin and the meat itself, or did you just leave that as skin and meat? Um, I put uh, I put well, I stuffed the turkey with like lemons and and mm-hmm. thyme and rosemary and yeah. and garlic, but uh, but then uh, I did actually put some seasonings in the between the skin and the meat as well. It's nice. a good move. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Right on. Like, Very cool. I know, and I was like, this is either I'm either going to be the hero of Thanksgiving, or we're not getting. Or any I'm going to be. We're not going to eat any meat, right? Like we had tons of mashed potatoes, so like there was no concern about us not eating. Um, but yeah, it turned out really well. Nice. So glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that was that was that was fun. That fu- that part was fun. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then all hell broke loose. And uh, yeah, then all hell broke loose. So, uh, but speaking of fun things as well, oh, I thought you were going to uh, say speaking of hell. Well, no, no fun things. Uh, actually, our extra life event happened a couple weeks ago as well. Yeah. Uh, so thank you everybody who supported the stream. Uh, thank you to Chris and Matt and Baron who jumped on, and obviously you and Mike as well for supporting the stream. Uh, so that was really a lot of fun. All the people that donated all this money, uh, for a good cause and. And then all the people that helped out by donating products. So we had Gaming Generations who donated a bunch of product, which is awesome. Um, and then to Stride PR and to Uber Stratus PR as well, because they also provided some game codes for us too to raise money for Extra Life. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who helped us uh, raise money. We raised uh, over six hundred dollars for Extra Life. So impressive. Uh, and that all goes to local children's hospitals. So, you know, the good news it is it was very fun. Good, good news is you don't have to do another mega stream for another 12 months. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh my gosh. I, I will say, like, at the end, I think even uh, Streamlabs is like, I'm done. Like, <laughs> this is, this has been really long because it was, it was working really well. And then at the end, it was just like, ah, uh, it did start chugging I a little bit towards the end. It's, yeah. And I started chugging towards the end and uh, but it was fun. It was a good time. And I'm so glad it made it so much easier with people jumping on and hanging out on the stream as well. So again, thank you to all those that help support that. And, uh, and you know, here's the other thing Phil I'll say too, is that we actually have uh, some game codes. So so the idea was that we're going to hit milestones. Like I had a thousand dollars was my goal. Mm -hmm. So we didn't quite hit the thousand, but because we have, game codes yet uh what i'm going to do is in in our extra life like you can still donate to the end of the year uh so on tuesdays i'm going to start streaming uh and until we have all the codes gone i'll just stream and say any donation of any amount yeah during the stream uh you're entered for a chance to win we'll give out a game on the stream nice and uh and you can check that out at uh twitch.com slash Gamerheads on oh, no, switch TV dot, switch dot TV slash gamerheads. Um, <clears throat> it's a gamerheads, gamerheads podcast. That's probably gamerheads podcast. <laughs> um, sometimes I forget. Um, but yeah, you can go there and we'll be streaming on Tuesdays. I'll be streaming from like 8 30 central time to about 10 30 central time. Uh, if you need to compare Another... that, let me know because I'm typically home on Tuesday nights and I would love to multiplayer oh. some stuff up with you and you and I can dance yeah. the unholy dance. Yeah, that'd be uh, and I don't know if you saw the press release that I sent out, but I think we should no. have a, a, a roundtable conversation about 
the three of us starting to do this thing live on Thursday nights when we actually record to get some audience participation. That, <clears throat> that that was actually the next thing I had on my list because I did have that in the press. That you, I mean, you sent out that email, that yeah. mass email to all the employees, uh, all two of us. Uh, and uh, well, no, Mark Keating as well. Yeah, Mark Keating. Um, Don't forget about Mark Keating. Yeah, yeah, I forget. I always forget about him. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, that starts next week, and we'll start it with the game. So you can join us watching the Game Awards show. We'll stream that. We'll be streaming live. Wait, we're we'll streaming the Game Awards about... live next week. Yeah. Holy hell! I forgot that part. Yeah. So okay, I think that starts at seven central. I think I'm going to look. Um, but we'll stream that live. We'll restream. Yeah. Next week, Thursdays. And I should also make another program note, uh, that the week after that, Jill Grote, the Indian former will be joining us and talking about the, uh, top game of the year indie games. So, uh, we'll be talking about that the week after the game awards. So next week starts our live streams on Thursdays. Um, you'll hear the podcast then released on Fridays, but the live streams will happen on Thursdays and, uh, you can join us at twitch.tv slash gamerheads podcast and check us out there. I mentally chuckle and I, I don't know if I should talk about this on, on the air or not. It's nothing too bad, but last night I went to AEW dynamite and they, ta- they tape rampage afterwards. And it's very oh, yeah, funny yeah. because Justin Roberts, the ring announcer at the beginning of the show, he says, thank you for attending AEW dynamite, whatever, Stick around after the show, and you'll be able to be the first people to see AEW Rampage. And it's like, well, yeah, no kidding we'll be able to. You're filming it live in <laughs> front of us. It's not like you're giving us a sneak presentation. And I kind of sat there, and I scratched my head, and I looked at my homie Lucy, and I'm like, did he just, what the f- is- <laughs> Okay. If that's the way you want to phrase it, that's the way you're going to phrase it. Oh, that's hilarious. You'll be the oh, first to be able to see it. Well, yeah, you're filming yeah. it in front well, of us. Yeah. I would I sure mean, yeah. hope so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how else it works. Uh, but, I mean, do they think that they're going to do something? <laughs> like, <laughs> don't leave. We're filming another show after this. That's all you would have Please to say is leave. we're going to film Rampage right after this. You don't have to say yeah. you'll be the first people in the world to see it because obviously we're going to. You're performing yeah, it right in front of us. Yeah, right. Right. Made yeah. me scratch but Don't my tell head. anybody. Right. Did they say that? Did they say that? Don't no, tell anybody what happened. about that. And like spoilers really? are online and stuff about it already because it's, it's yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I, how could they? How right. could they? There's no way you can. Right. There There's was no 5,000 people. You're not making everybody sign an NDA when they walk in the building that if you can't talk yeah. about this. Right. Speaking of uh, wrestling events, and I know this is not a wrestling podcast, but there is that Venn diagram of gamers and wrestling fans and we happen to be that crossover <laughs> uh did you see smackdown's coming december 15th to green bay is it really yeah I might and roman reigns is gonna be there Ooh. Mm-hmm. i might make the drive yeah so that's like ooh, like two weeks ish. i might be able to make that work i have to look i don't i, I didn't look at to see what the tickets are <laughs> uh Day off, they're less expensive. Yeah, I kind of want to go. But anyway, yeah. I know you're a big Roman Reigns fan, so I was like, oh, I should tell him that. I so. hail my tribal chief. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, I guess that's the big news that I wanted to talk about was the fact that we'll be streaming live now every Thursday. You want to talk Tuesdays, about it? I brought so. it up. It was my idea. <laughs> that's true. You did send out that notice to all of us. You're worse than Mike Pence. <laughs> oh. Hey listeners and Phil, yeah. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. So, to get me going going in the morning, I would start with a large cup of coffee. Three of them. And three of them. Yeah, yeah, me too. Usually like one or two, but by mid-afternoon, I start feeling sluggish, and guess what I would do? Get another cup of coffee. Go to the coffee shop and buy another big cup of coffee to get me through the afternoon. But the problem with that is, Phil, is that that caffeine would keep me up late at night. And yeah. guess what? I'd be super tired the next day. So I do it all over again. And that became a vicious cycle. I wasn't getting much sleep. I was losing productivity and creativity. And the worst part was I knew this wasn't healthy. Does that sound familiar to you, Phil? 
Absolutely, except usually I don't go for that fourth cup of coffee in the afternoon. I go for like 10 ounces of ice cold Coca-Cola, and I hate drinking soda because it's super sweet. <laughs> and I'm mad at myself yeah. every time I do it. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Well, Phil, I then discovered Magic Mind, uh, a Magic healthy Mind. energy. Yeah, it's a healthy energy drink that helped me break that vicious cycle. And what I love is that I found this one little shot ga- greatly improved my mornings. I take it once in the morning, and then I feel energized shortly after taking it. And that is crazy, Phil. That is, I cannot tell you how amazing that feeling is. It was like, so, like, you just feel energized and... Like, bouncing off the walls energized or just, like, ready to go type of energized? just ready to go. Just, like, not, like, oh, I'm over-caffeinated, but just, like, wow, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go for my day. It's amazing. Uh, And the best part is I didn't have crashes in the afternoon. In fact, I felt energized throughout the whole day. It was awesome. It's not even possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I didn't think so either until Magic Mind. And Phil, my days, probably like yours, are very long and require some focus. And for me, also requires creativity. And it's that stems from being in all day meetings and creating learnings at my job as an instructional designer to writing reviews and producing the Gamer Heads podcast. And I will tell you at the end of the day, I felt burnt out and lacked creativity and focus. But once I started taking Magic Mind, I really felt a change. I feel my creative juices flowing again. I'm allow it allows me to think differently about the learnings I'm I'm building and develop fun and create creative solutions. And I also focus in meetings, which I really struggled with those ones in the it's afternoon. It's not even possible. <laughs> and Phil. This is the best part, too. When I get home, I feel energized and excited to put my creative talents into writing and producing gamer heads. And I don't feel the burnout like I did before. Uh, and I'm getting plenty of rest at night because I'm not taking in a lot of caffeine in, after- in the afternoon. And I feel way better in the mornings and happier throughout the day. And the biggest that's the biggest reason that I actually really love and endorse Magic Mind because I actually can feel that I'm not as grouchy. And crabby what? in the mornings. Who yeah. are you? I know, right? I know. Goodbye, Krabby Roger. Hello, happy Roger. I gotta find uh, a new podcast now. <laughs> uh, I will say this too, Phil. I'm sure you've done this too. I've tried other energy drinks before, and most of them left a sour taste in my mouth. And why Literally. is that, Phil? Because they're all they all taste like chemicals. I yeah, and those also gave me upset stomachs too. Uh, plus, like you said, I didn't know everything that went into those energy drinks, but with Magic Mind, not only does it taste great, but I don't have an upset stomach from drinking it. And it's made with all natural ingredients sourced from the best suppliers with no sugar added. It is nut free and vegan, too. Uh, this is how you can get Magic Mind. You can get it at magicmind.com slash gamerheads. And here's the cool part. Using the code gamerheads 20 you also get up to 56% off your first subscription or 20% off your one-time purchase. That's GamerHeads20 for 50%, 56% off. It also works if you're already a subscriber, so you save on your next subscription payment. I've included a link in the show notes as well. And Phil, I stand by behind Magic Mind because it does work, and it has helped me break that vicious cycle, and I know it will help you, listener, break that vicious cycle as well. And that's Magic Mind slash Gamerheads with the discount code of Gamerheads20 for up to 56% off your subscription. That's affordable. I'm looking at the website right now. Yeah, do it, man. I'm all over this. Okay, let's talk about games that we're currently playing. I thought uh, we were, we're going to that. What? What did you think was going to be next? Now we're going to discuss our game of the year. Oh, game of year. You're right. I forgot. Or do you that's wait the next until Mike's around. No, we, I mean, we talked about the nominees last, not last week, but the week before. Um, but we could talk about gaming. We're going to be talking about game of the year till the end of the year, probably. Also true. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Phil, I'll let you go first. If you have notes, and since you are the president and CEO, I feel like I have to let you go first you on this kind of first. stuff. Come on, man. Um, what is your 
what is your game of the year? Do you have a game of the year? So uh, far? Or do you have a couple game of the contenders for the game of the year? I got a couple that are up there. Uh, I got two indie games that are actually getting a lot of love for me, which I should probably sit on until Jill's here, but I'll go into deeper disclosure on that when she's around. Cause I know that she'll also throw one of the two into the conversation. Two games that really knocked my socks off this year that were not AAA titles were uh, Dredge, of course, the yeah. fishing simulator with Cthulhu vibes. I can't believe that they came out this year. It's, like, it's so weird. It seems like forever ago. Right? And then another yeah. one that I'm going to give a lot of love to is Killer Frequency, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago as well, which oh, is yeah. the, the first-person puzzle explorer game walking simulator set in the 1980s that's all neon and, and synthesizer music. I'm trying to find the, uh, the, the whistling killer. Uh, I adored the hell out of that game. Yeah. That was fantastic. Uh, a couple of my honorable mentions as far as AAA titles go is I'm going to throw Diablo 4 in the mix because I put a lot of time into Diablo 4. Did you really? I did. I, wow. I beat the main I campaign. <laughs> I almost beat the entire first season before I finally gave up. I debated jumping back in for the second season, but I talked myself Whoa. out of it. Uh, another game that I want to give a lot, little bit of love to is Remnant 2, which I don't feel has been talked about all that yeah. much this year, which is too bad because it's very innovative. And if you're playing it with friends, it's a darn good time. First person shooter, a little bit of exploration. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Procedurally generated levels to it as well. Mm. Uh, you never really know what you're getting into until you get into it. And I had a really good time playing that with uh, a couple of friends of mine, which actually just hit Game Pass today as well. So for those that feel like Oh, did fine, it really? Yeah, Remnant 1 and 2 both hit Game Pass today. Oh wow! Which is pretty gnarly. I wanna, I, I wanna give that a game, that game a go. Yeah, so we should play that. Uh, we could even do that next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be fun. Uh, but as of right now, and I'll talk a little bit more about it a little bit later. My game of the year, and I don't even see it being close, is the Almighty Alan Wake Two. Really, I want to just give this game a really big hug, warm embrace, pat it on the back, and tell it it did wow. everything very, very well, and thank it for its service because. I'm loving the hell out of it. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever play Alan Wake too. I I don't think you will either. Yeah. It's just not my, my type of game, but uh, I'm glad, I'm glad I was a little worried because I think a lot of people had high expectations of this game, right? Because everybody loves the first game. Absolutely. And I was really worried that it was not going to live up to the hype. Uh, but it sounds like it. I mean, it it's getting a lot of it's getting good reviews like too. praise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and obviously it's run. It's it's in the game of the year can, uh, discussion for the game awards. So I voted for it. Yeah, I had to vote yet. Wait, can I vote yet? Yeah, I think you can. Is it? OK. Um, yeah, that's really cool. If your um, vote doesn't matter because you're not one of those paid off journalists. That's true. That's true. <laughs> oh man, that 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 those that that. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Roger, what's in your contention yeah. for game of the yeah. year? Yeah. No, I'm gonna say that 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 that, that those comments that people make really piss me it's off. It's stupid. I'm just gonna so. Yeah, I know. I know. Like AAA games that get high scores are AAA games that get high scores for reasons because they don't suck. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Like, yeah, the vast majority of the yeah. public likes them. So a vast majority of the public votes for them. I love yeah. an indie darling like a dredge or like a killer frequency. But the amount of people yeah. that play a dredge or a killer frequency compared yeah. to a Diablo four or an Alan Wake or even a Call of Duty or I'll say it a Last of Us or even a God of War like that number is in it, it's inconsequential, I think, is the word that I'm looking for. So, I mean, it's always going to be a triple A, stu- not always going to be a triple A studio that wins it. But a lot of the time it's going to be. It's going to be that game that you love to hate because you just hate things that are fun. Not you personally, yeah. but you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the mass. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember a couple? Of, oh, was it last? No, it wasn't last year. It was two years ago, right? Because what was the game last year? What was the game of the year? Oh, it was um, God of Elden. War. God of War and Elden Ring no. just traded blows the entire time, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but I thought Elden, or Elden Ring, right. not Elden War. What the hell is Elden War? It's for old people. <laughs> <laughs> uh but it was no it was two years ago with uh it takes two yep uh and everybody's like what the hell is this game yeah yes which had televised commercials and stuff and it was just like you guys try to be these indie darlings and the second like a huge triple a title which it was a triple a title it was put out by or it was published by ea so it was a triple a title like you guys are just mm, trying to work on my f-bombs because i can't say them when we start streaming live (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I agree. And yeah, so it's a it's a it's a running thing that Phil and I talk about a lot about like how people say, oh, you, just, uh, you just get paid for your reviews. Like nobody gets paid for the reviews. Nah, like, one of my good friends it's... used to be a reviewer for many, many years and his house is not that much bigger than mine. <laughs> and I work in a fucking kitchen. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, for my game, um, so yeah, I have a couple, I have a couple of indie games as well. So, uh, one of the top games, one of the best experiences, it's just such a crazy experience, um, is Slay the Princess. Uh, I love this game so much and I got to see it at PAX East. I got to play just the first chapter and the moment I played it, like I went straight to everybody I could and I was just like, Hey, you go play that game. Hey, you go play that game. Just go play that game. Grabbing and shaking random strangers. Yeah, just it was it was it was such a unique experience. And if you haven't played Slay the Princess like you should. And I should also say this uh, when I stream on Tuesday, those are one. That's one of the codes, actually, that we have to give away. We have a couple more Slay the Princess codes to give away um, for Extra Life. Uh, And but the game is a so it starts off with you're on you're in a path to the in the woods to a cabin and the narrator's reading all this and the voice acting is so good and it says you're here to slay the princess and then from there on you have to, you can start questioning of like well why do i have to do this and the narrator is like you're on a path to the cabin like why else would you be here the princess is in this cabin. The princess is going to destroy the world if you don't kill her. So you need to slay the princess. And it's so good. It is so good. And and, and I, I, I'm i I'm pretty sure it has multiple endings. Uh, the ending that I got, I felt like it was a really good ending. Um, but it's just, it's so, it just, it just plays with like, what is the right, what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Right. And makes you think with about moral like, consequences well, and moral dilemmas. Yeah. Moral console. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So it's a visual novel, but it's one of the best visual novels I've See, ever played. You say that, that word and it turns <clears throat> me off a little bit. Like know, I'm, I'm all in and then you say visual novel and I'm just like, <laughs> hmm. but this one's Phil. I mean, I will say there are visual novels that are not well done. Um, but this one is Some. very, 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 yeah, <laughs> this one's very well done. Um, so that's one of the indies that's in my top list. The other indie um, that I'm, uh, there's a couple of indies I want to announce here. Uh, another indie that is in my contender for game of the year is in stars and time. Uh, and this game is an RPG. It is so good. I have never experienced like, writing this good before like it's so well written so the premise is you are uh part of this band of heroes that have been traveling together for several months now and there's this evil king that put this cast over the land and it freezes everybody once once this like curse touches them and one of the person one of the one of the characters in your group her name is maribel and she survived this curse. Like she's the only person in her in her like land that survived this curse. So people started considering her the chosen one to go and defeat the king. And she but Anakin was the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she gets a band of people together, like these these friends, and they have to go and collect these orbs. And so at this point in the game. You're playing the Eve before they go take on the king, before they go into the castle and take on the king. And uh, and you just get so like all your characters are like level 45. You start at level 45. Mm. The old Which is pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, gonna right? OP you and then we're gonna take everything away and start from scratch. Now go get them and play yeah. where you started. <laughs> uh well, so here's the interesting thing I'll say about that. Um, so but what's really good about this game is that they tell you the story through the interaction of the characters and you just feel the friendship that these characters have with each other okay. uh, through the interactions. And it's just so well-written. Like there is no like hit you over the head of like, Oh, I have to explain everything to you. Like it just comes out naturally and it's so well done. 
But the interesting, so there's a couple of interesting things I'll say. The other interesting thing is that the uh, mechanics, the attack mechanics are all based on rock, paper, scissors. Okay. So some of your characters have uh, scissors abilities. And then if you're taking on an enemy that is rock, obviously that's going to hurt them the most if they get hit by the rock, right? But they do yeah, most damage. It hurts paper. Get hit by the rock. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, especially if it does like, you know, rock bottom on you. It's really bad. <laughs> um, Couldn't help it. Sorry uh so and what's cool is that you can set it up where you can give your turn to another player uh, or give that character's turn to another player so that way you can get all the same kind of uh attack either it be like scissors or yep. rock or paper obviously uh and then you'll do a special attack if you get all 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 five of them if you get five of them in a row uh it's so cool uh, and it seems like, you know, when you say rock, paper, scissors, scissors, you're like, well, that seems really simplistic. And at the core of it, it's simplistic, but actually the implementation like takes a lot of strategy around like, yeah. oh, like this character can only do scissors attacks and all her things or all his things are all based on scissors. So like, I have to think differently about how I want to do this. And my character that actually has paper attack can only attack once they only have one attack right so like you have to think like i just want to give that person all my turns right so it's really uh, it's all like time based too right so it's all turn based but like you have a meter on the bottom to see how fast your your character can go and such right <clears throat> so that's really cool but the other mechanic that's uh in this game is uh time looping so your character dies and they wake up and it's like the beginning of the game again um and you soon find out that there's some higher power at play that's allowing this to happen. And, but what's cool is that everything, your character, you play the thief character, your character retains their XP and their level. Uh, so they don't start over. The other characters start, their levels start over. But if they leveled up and they earned, they learned like a new craft, like a new spell, they get to keep that spell, even if they're at a lower level okay. than, than it was when they first learned it. So, and the other cool thing is that <clears throat> as you're going through this, uh, you uh, start getting these, what's called memories. And basically memories allow certain things to happen in your next play. Like there might be a memory that there's a character that's a support character. She's a kid and she comes running. Oh, she's so awesome. She comes running in with a frying pan and hits the enemies with it. But sometimes she'll throw out like potions to your characters as well. Yeah. And uh, there's one memory where you uh, learn about health or learning about healing potions. And then now she can throw out health potions to your characters as well. So it's really cool. So if you have that, you have to have that equipped so you can equip different memories. Yep. And it gives you different bonuses. So you can decide which which memory you want to have equipped. Really, it's a really fascinating game. It's so well done, and the art uh, the art is all black and white, but it's really well done. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll say like just on the out like again, you think rock paper scissors, you're like oh that's like very simplistic, and the art it's it's good, it's but it's not like over the top, right? right. It's just very simplistic, but everything is just so it hits everything. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Uh, both slay the princess and uh in stars and time i gave a pluses too right on. Uh, they're both on the website uh gamerheadspodcast.com you can read that those reviews there i do have uh, to say when you say rock paper yeah. scissors do you remember battle beast yeah. from the 1980s not the 1780s or the 1880s battle beasts yeah. <laughs> they were the the little plastic the, toys that looked like beasts because yes, they yes, were battle beasts yes, and you like held in yes. the thing and it was all thermal charge and you were either fire yes. wood or water that's what yes. I think of in my head. Like you didn't know yeah, what you were yeah, getting yeah. into until you opened it up. Yeah. Man, that'll be so yeah. rad. Oh, those were really cool. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Sorry, going back into the do you remember also Transformers had the the thermal thing yep. where you could hold it and see you if and you knew. Yeah. Before like you looked at it, you're like, I know exactly what you yeah, are. Exactly. It's like, oh, your symbol is obviously yep. a Decepticon. <laughs> like, that's right. Well, that was the same with Battle like, Beast, too. Like, you have a reindeer character, and it's like, oh, so you're yeah. wood, huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what? You're not fire? Yeah. What? It's a frog character. <laughs> hmm. What are you going to be? <laughs> oh, you're water. I'll be damned. Shocking. <laughs> uh, I do remember those. I didn't have many of those. I, I mean, we talked about this, but like Muscle Men, yep. the little pink figures were like always. Millions of unusual creatures lurking everywhere. Yep. Also, Where guts I used to have a lot of too. The little guts. army dudes. Oh, yeah. those guts, yeah, those guys yeah. were rad. Yeah. All yeah. right. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to derail it. No. It's, yeah. No. I. I paper, uh, rock, paper, scissors. Made me go there. 
Yeah. Um, as far as AAA games go, um, I would say Tears of the Kingdom. I know. I know you're going to give a thumbs down to that. Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I it's just really good. The other one, the other one, I will say, like I was, I was really skeptical of it because, like, I saw it in the game of I mean, listed as the game of a uh, year contender, and I was like, really? Um, but now I, I kind of see, I can see why Mario Wonder, Super Mario what Brothers my Wonder. Thumbs down was for. Huh, I know that oh, okay. too. Yeah, Which yeah, reminds me, too. as I was driving home from the prison in Maine, I was listening <laughs> to the podcast, and I wish I could have been a yeah. part of it because I had a lot to say. Oh. Because you guys, man, the Nintendo love was thick. Just well, thick. When you're when you're not here, I, nobody's here to shit on Nintendo stuff. I know, and so you guys just get to sit there and count out of their every need, and it's just ugh, it's egregious and obnoxious. When you're not here, I feel like nauseating. I, can finally I say nauseating. Feel like I could actually show my my. It comes love through even Nintendo. when I'm here. Nobody <laughs> questions the shit even when I'm sitting right here, Roger. <laughs> that's that's probably true, uh, but. You know, so the other thing I'm hopeful for, Phil, is I'm hoping that at Game Awards that uh, Larian said that they're going to have an announcement about Baldur's Gate Mm -hmm. uh, for the Xbox. I'm hoping it releases that night. Oh, it would be really cool. cool Shadow drop. Like I went to shadow drop of GTA (laughs) six. Yeah. The internet just shuts down for a week because it was attempting to download GTA six. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I hope that happens. It would be really cool. I don't think I don't think this is going to happen. It'd be really cool if it ends up on Game Pass. I'd be <laughs> super excited. That's not going to happen. You're going to have to give that 10 months. I'm really hopeful. Yeah, I, I hope I hope I hope that it it I hope it shadow drops. That'd be so cool. But I, I suspect I'll just be like, by the end of the month, we'll have it out on an Xbox. Well, they did say it was going to come in in December. So, I mean, there's the chance it does shadow drop, but I'm not. It's not yeah. going to Game Pass. It's EA published, right? Is it? I think you're right. I think you're right. Which, if it is, so, that means there's a chance it's going to show up on EA Play, or whatever the hell they call their yeah, concoction. Yeah. Which I'm kind of surprised that which, Jedi Survivors hasn't shown up on yet, in all honesty. Oh, yeah. And I feel like if you're an Ultimate Game Pass member, don't you get EA mm-hmm. for free? Yeah. The EA Pass, right? Yeah. Uh, so those are my games. Um, Mario so Wonder yeah, was um, on my short list, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. How far are you on that game now? <clears throat> Fourth level, we haven't played in a couple of weeks. Not since, uh, not since Maiden. Hmm. <laughs> that just changed you, didn't it? It did. I'm, I'm a hmm. hardened criminal now. I'm like Dom Mysterio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I um, I I have been playing a little bit more. Uh, I am farther now than my than my kids are. Um, but I will say as much as much as it is frustrating because they just keep why don't we segue this running. into games we're playing and you go ahead and start yeah, off we with should. this okay all right let's go into games we're playing so yeah i'll just i'll just i'll Damn, just nail them segways more. tonight there you go yeah no kidding um yeah so mario wonder we i've been playing a little bit beyond what my kids have been playing like we have two different accounts mm-hmm. and uh yeah i mean i will say as much as i love playing it with my kids but they like to rush through the levels they don't want to find this the hidden seeds and i'm like what are you doing that's like half of this game that's what you're supposed to be doing yep but i will say it is though some of those levels if you don't have a if you don't have yoshi to like swim to uh they're really hard like that one with the with the bulls where you're hopping on the back of the bulls i heard you talking about that last level. week or two oh my ago, god yeah that was that was so hard as solo. Like that's really difficult solo. But like if I have my my son playing as Yoshi, I'm just like just stand on top of them, don't move, and I'll swim to you. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> I'm thankful for the fact that Rachel plays as Yoshi as well because I've got that same advantage where I can just kind of creep yeah. in the back door and hit that Yoshi, and we're we're about our business. But luckily, yeah. she is all about finding those wonder seeds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son is just like, let's just, and it, you know, like I said, that that's how he's playing Spider Man, right? It's like, he's like, I just want to get through go, the go, game. Go. Critical path. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Mario, uh, I've been playing some more. Uh, some other games I've been playing, I'll mention these here. Uh, I also have been playing, oh, this, so I have a, a couple games that I'm reviewing. Well, one, one of them is out there on, on the, on the, um, on the website and i'll talk about that one first i guess so this one's called phantom rose 2 sapphire uh so phil you know this about me 
I am a huge deck builder fan. Like I love deck builder games. I hated like, this I game them. the second the name of it came out of your mouth. <laughs> no, but this one's so good. Uh-huh. So most most deck builder most deck builders, the way that they work is uh you get uh your cards and then it's random, right? So like you don't like it's it's the luck of a draw, right? So sometimes you'll be really lucky and you get the gar- cards that you want right away. But this one all your cards are available to you. Okay. And what's cool is that the enemy will play their two cards and you get to see what the cards will do. So like it might be the next card plays. If it's attack, this card will add another five points of attack to your care, to your enemy or whatever. So of course I don't want to play attack card. I want to play something that's going to heal my character at that point. Sure. But it, there's a lot of strategy involved. But then some, but the cards you can play any card you want. But there is a cooldown on the cards, so you have to think through like, do I want to play it now, uh, knowing that there's like a three turn cooldown on it, and I'll, I can't play it again until much later. Um, but it's, what the cool thing is that there's no in there's no real money. You're not using real money. You're using in game currency to buy new cards. That's cool. And. Yeah, and then when you're done with a run, you can actually go back to base and buy packs of cards with the in-game currency. Oh, it's so cool. It's such a cool, cool game. Uh, the artwork is really cool. It looks very anime. Um, I reviewed this. I gave it an A. I think I gave it an A or an A plus as well on, on our on our website because I really, really loved this game. Um, I love deck builders. So if you're a deck builder fan, this this game is really fantastic. Uh, go check out our review on our website at GamerHeadsPodcast.com. The other two games I'll mention here that I'm also currently playing, another deck builder that I love for a different reason. You should just Doomsday be a carpenter. I know. I should. <laughs> uh, this one's called Doomsday Paradise. So this is a unique take on deck builders. It's a deck builder and dating sim. Oh boy. But I was so in are... a Doomsday Paradise. I'm like, that's at least a cool name. And then you're like, <laughs> deck builder dating sim. And I, yeah. I started reading Wonder Woman. <laughs> no, but the dating sim, Phil, what's funny about this is like the end of the world's coming. And you're like, all your characters are kind of like weird demon-esque type creatures. Uh, and you get to like try to you get to pick the character that you want to try to win over before the end of the world happens uh there is multiple endings lots of endings in this game and what's cool about this one is again most deck builders only allow you to play so many cards like you'll run out of like action points or whatever uh and in this one it's based on your character's intelligence so there's a little bit of like rpg stat building elements to this game as well uh, and the artwork is really good. Uh, it's a quirky game. A I will say that. Builder. How like, is the artwork? Okay. What? No, the characters. The characters are really well drawn. Like all the characters that you interact on with the cards? are really well drawn. No, like you you pick a character in the beginning. That's your, oh. that's, yeah. Like a lot of these deck builders, you, you have a character and then you're playing the cards and that's their attacks that they do. The cards are the attacks that those characters mm-hmm. will do. Um, do you play Magic, Roger? T- I did. Do you still play I it did. No? Um, not as much anymore. You know what game I did play a lot of when I was a kid? Nobody is nobody played this game. Listeners, if you play this game, I want you to actually email us at info at gamerheadspodcast.com and say, yeah, I played that game. Uh Doom Trooper. There was a card game called Doom Trooper. And this game was so much better than Magic. Uh it's it is so but it was what so have I done? but they came out. Yeah, but no, they came out of they came out with a video game of this, like a Super Nintendo game of Doom Trooper. Okay. But it had nothing to do with the card game. It just had to do with the lore. It was actually, yeah, I don't know. It, but I think it was, it was based on the card a comic game. Book. It was an actual action RPG. Like, it was an action <laughs> game. It wasn't just a bullshit deck builder. I mean, the no, deck, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> the CCG was awesome, but man, when you actually get to play through it and you're like an animated character and you get to kill things, it's even better. <laughs> no, the card game was really cool because. Uh, there was different factions. There's like five different factions, and there was this faction called the Brotherhood, who were like, like religious sect. And then there was this, um, like these demon type characters. And if you had demon cards on the de- on the table, and you had the Brotherhood, they had to fight them. They had to kill. Like they were sworn to kill them. But then there was other corporations 
that were out there that you could play. Yeah, it was so Phil, the card game. No, it's really good. It It sounds like Fallout. Really, really, really good. Well, kind kind of. I think there was a comic book, actually. uh, I do think it is a comic. I think, yeah. Um, anyway, now they say that, like, I realized that's actually where I got my love of card build, like deck builders were from like things like that. Like, I didn't realize that until you said that. I've opened like, all oh the gosh. cans of worms. I know. I know. You know what? One deck builder I never really did play though was Pokemon. I never got, I never got into Pokemon. Me neither. I just do the go in the uh, sleep. Yeah. I, uh, my kids have Pokemon cards and I tried playing it with them, but they didn't really like it very much. Maybe they'll try it again. Not they're older, this but they were really a hell of a segue from game of the year, by the way. I know, I know, I know. It's my right? fault. Well, these are games we're playing. Oh, yeah, these are games we're playing right now. Well, it's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's all uh, six of one, half dozen another. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Right. Uh, one last game I'll mention here that I'm playing is uh, Colored Effects, and this is a puzzle platform game. Uh, it is on the Switch. Yeah, I think it might be on other systems too, but for sure on the Switch for four ninety nine. So it's really a reasonable game. Great. That means that Mike's going to make uh, me play it in a year when it's on sale. <laughs> uh and so the premise is that you're this little character and you touch different areas uh that are that have different colors and they give you different powers so like a blue will allow you to double jump red allows you to throw fireballs yellow allows you to do a quick dash uh i think those are the three colors that you have and you'll need to use all these different colors to basically get through the different platform it's a puzzle it's a puzzle game right mm-hmm. so you have to figure out oh i have to make this thing you have to get all the different like these little diamonds to open the doors and to do that you might have to like make something open by putting a block on it and then dash over before the door closes and then grab the thing so it makes you think and then there what's cool about this game that i haven't experienced with other puzzle games or many puzzle games like this is there are boss battles every so often as well okay um I really like this game a lot because I think there's really good level design behind it. The one thing I will say, nobody holds your hand with this game. Like the say, first one tough, is like, it? it's really hard. The first level is like really, really easy. You're like, oh yeah, I get it. Like I touch this, this I'm not sure. And the next level, you're like, wait, what? What do you what do you want me to do? And then the third level is like you fight against a boss and like, wait, what? I'm fighting against a boss already. And I think it's like the second boss before. Like I'm on the third boss now, but I think it's the second boss. Um, There was nothing to tell me how to beat him. I was like, how do I beat him? I, fi- I figured it out just by through trial and error. Right. But there was nothing to explain. Like, if you do this, this block does this. And I was like, oh, oh, I get it. But like I the the one that I'll say that's my my one complaint about the game is that they don't when mo- good puzzle games like introduce a concept and then they have you try it yep. and then use it differently later on. Right. This one was just like, here's something new. We're not going to tell you about it. Just figure it out. <laughs> it uh, I know I'm not the retro guy of the show, but from hearing you describe yeah. this and I know it's not at all the same, but it kind of mentally gives me Solomon's key slash mighty bomb. Jack yes. Vibes. Yes, 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 very much. Uh, so, oh, Solomon's Key is probably one of the hardest puzzle games Absolutely. I've ever played. The game's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Tough. <laughs> Do you know that those are my first two games I owned on the, besides Duck Hunt and How Mario Brothers? How did you keep gaming? I would have retired. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like, yep, well, this so... video game thing isn't for me. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> What's funny was, uh wow this is gonna be a stroll down memory lane and you probably will be like oh yeah i know that store so kb toys yep. had uh Ninten- had an nes and my best friend in grade school his mom bought him an nes and his mom and my mom were friends so his mom said to my mom you need to get the kids an nes they only have a couple left at kb toys so we like ran out to the KB Toys in Fond du Lac, which is where, like, the closest KB Toys we had. And home of We the got casino. it. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't think I know where the casinos in Wisconsin are, Roger? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we got it. And then and then my friend's mom said, well, you can't just buy... <laughs> this is so silly. I mean, I appreciate the fact that she said this, 
But the fact that it came with two games, she didn't have to say this, but she said, you can't just buy the system without buying games. So my mom's like, well, I guess I have to buy two games. But like games were, I mean, Nintendo was expensive. It was $200 and $200 back then was a lot of money, right? Still Um, a lot of money. So she bought. Yeah, for sure. Like, I can't just drop $200. I'm almost going to buy $200 like that. Yeah, it's, I still like, eh. like, there's a cutoff of like, eh, yeah, I don't feel like yep. I, I like that. Eh, not impulse buy. Um, but there was two, the two games that she bought because they were $20 a piece. Again, not cheap back then, but they're the cheapest of the games were Solomon Key and Mighty Bomb Jack. And uh, so those are two games that I started with. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. That's a oh, really good inter- I played explained so much about you, though, Roger. <laughs> Like, this is basically therapy right now. I'm like, now I understand Roger. (laughs) I played so much Solomon Key. I did, too. I played so much. I own both of them as well, so it's one of those... I think that was one of those games that, like, I probably got them... My parents probably got them at a garage sale for me because, like, the kids were just like, F this, we can't play this damn game. We can't make it past the third level. (laughs) So, like, it hit a garage sale for, like, $4, and my mom was just like, ooh, Nintendo game for $4. And I'm like, ooh, video game. (laughs) And now I hate Nintendo. Yeah, None of neither of those games made much sense. That's the other no. thing, right? Like, especially Mighty Bomb Jack. At least Solomon's Key, I, I understood the the level design, right? Yep. You're like, oh, I have fireballs, and I can only shoot them. Like, I have to shoot them at these two people because I'll run out of fireballs, and like these two monsters are the things that are going to kill me, and I can dodge those other. Like, right? You start thinking like, I that's a very puzzle game. Mighty Bomb Jack. I have no idea what's going on in that game. That game didn't make any sense to me. It's still on the Switch, the Nintendo on the Switch, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I might have to. Find I don't want to go back and play. I kind of do. No, and I'm. I kind of. I'll don't. remember like the first two levels, and then after that, I'm just gonna be like, I never made it. Yeah. Past it. Actually, let's be real. I'm not making it past the second level at this age. <laughs> you should play Solomon's Key. I remember Solomon's Key quite fondly. Yeah, I more fondly. I should. I say. mean, not fondly. fondly I feel like. <laughs> I feel like. I made it far in that game, but I really don't know. But I think I did because there's there was so many levels in that game. I might YouTube but I, like a Solomon's Key speed run. Well, I'm laying. I kind of want to see what happens at the end yeah, of the like, game. I, just watch somebody yeah, play through it. What happened? Well, I want to see what happens at the end of Muddy Bomb Jack. What 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 is this? I mean, it's like pyramids, and I don't know what's <laughs> going on in this game. I had those two games, and I hated them. And then my mom found Karnov at a garage, so I was like, Karnov rules. Oh. Karnov is so good. Thank you, Data East. Uh, oh, Karnov. I love Karnov. And did you ever play um, Rygar? Absolutely, man. And then they made the remake. Yeah, and yeah. like, I remember sitting over to Andy's house playing Rygar yeah. like, when they did the remake. And I was yeah. just like, this is bullshit, dude. The first Rygar ruled. And this is garbage. <laughs> and I was pissed because it was only like a six hour game. And I'm like, this is a $60 six hour game. That's $10 an hour, man. I just got done playing it. Uh, Oblivion. Not Oblivion, but the one that was before that. Uh, mm. Yeah. Jesus. Morrowind? No, no. Yeah, Oblivion. I'm sorry. It was Oblivion. I'm just like, that was a $60 okay. game, and I put 190 hours into it. <laughs> this is a six-hour experience for $60? Started questioning everything in life. Yeah. Mike, we yeah. need you back. This is what happens when you're gone. Yeah. This, yeah, look, yeah, look what happens. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. That's that's the games I'm playing. <laughs> Phil, what games are you playing? Uh, oh, I've, I've been playing games. Right. Um, so I'm just going to quickly touch on... Uh, what the hell's the name? Zen Studios just put out something today or yesterday called Pinball M. Which, Ooh. for anybody who knows me, knows that I love pinball, and I was so disappointed by the relaunch of Pinball FX because you have to buy all the tables, nothing ported over because there was a big Pinball FX2 and a big Pinball FX3 fan. Yeah. Pinball yeah. M came out. I was like, what's the M for? And it's got kind of like a skeletal grizzly hand that's holding the uh, the 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 pullback shooter thing. Man, words oh. are eluding me. Like just on the plunger. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, like on the menu screen, I was just like, all right, I'm intrigued. So I, I I bought it. I shouldn't say I bought it, but I downloaded it and you get one free table with it. Don't remember what the name of the free table was. And so I looked at what the other four tables that are available were, and they are Duke Nukem. Oh, Dead by Daylight. That's wait, wait, wait. Duke Nukem. Is that what you went to go? I mean, is that what you saw? We're not, was it a pinball game? We're not talking about that. Okay, okay. What what happens in Maine stays in Maine until we get on the podcast. <laughs> uh, so Duke Nukem, uh, Chucky, The oh. Thing, and Dead by what? Daylight are the other four tables. So oh, it's wow. all mature-themed horror games. So I think the M stands for mature. 
The play is just like all the other Zen tables. Absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. I spent the $20 and bought the four other tables. I have not gotten into them yet. I've only played the (laughs) beginner table, but I'm looking forward to deep diving into this because I love myself some, I'll say, 1230 in the morning pinball where I'm just like unwinding for the night. I've got my beverage of choice next to me. I've got my whatever next to me as well. And I'm just sitting there zoning out playing pinball, which is what I'm going to do when I get done with this podcast. I'm going to go hang out upstairs and I'm going to go play some pinball. Um, nice. because the way that the first one played again is exactly like all the other Zen pinball games and they knock pinball out of the park. They've got animated things on the table. They're absolutely gorgeous and they play super fun. I'm stoked to get into this. Um, outside of pinball M, which I just discovered today, cause I think it just came out today. I have obviously been playing some Alan Wake too. Yeah. And I fell in love with this game from the absolute first second that I started playing it. It plays, it is like the first Alan Wake, but nothing like the first Alan Wake at the same time. I would say if you were to compare hmm. the two, it'd be like comparing Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 4. Hmm. Re- uh, the first Alan Wake had a lot of action in it where you were like in these tight, close quarter combats types of situations where this one, it's the, the combat is much more sporadic and the ammunition is much more sparse. And there's a lot more heavy of an exploring vibe to it and you play as two different characters mm. you play as a detective and unfortunately i mean i don't remember the name of the detective the female detective but as the game initially loads up and if you're not looking for any kind of spoilers i'm not going to spoil much here but you come crawling out of a lake as a naked heavy set male come crawling out of a lake and you're trying to make your way to like freedom is kind of the vibe that you get and you end up getting killed by this mm. cult in the woods uh as soon as you get killed you then like cuts over to the female detective that you play as and you're going to investigate the crime scene you start piecing together the crime scene and you're actually like doing things at the crime scene that are like putting pieces together as to of who killed why they killed this type of a thing and then you go back to explore the woods at night all hell breaks loose now i shouldn't even say all hell breaks loose super tense environment there's a lot of puzzles that are involved in it which i'm i'm digging because the puzzles are easy enough that my stupid self can figure them out and i'm not actually stupid but i don't put a lot of thought into things a lot of time um but this game is just jam-packed with creepiness and a fair shake of jump scares as well like there are times yeah, that you're yeah, going yeah, and doing see, yeah. something like all of a sudden <clears throat> big face on the screen loud noise like, nope ah, kind of like jump backwards a little bit uh, as you play through and you kind of get to like the crux as to what's going on as you're exploring this little town in, I, I think it's Washington, not Maine this time. Might be Maine. Who knows? Um, but you kind of like start to talk to the town folk and there are like, uh, just like in the first one, there are live action scenes that are happening like on the television, on the radio and ads and things like that for you to collect. And as day breaks mm-hmm. and you go back into the woods to go and check out the crime scene for a second time because, oh, the water's receded. We might have missed something. Go and check that out. You run into some of these people from like the TV commercials and things like that. It is just, it is so, so well done. Hmm. And eventually, again, spoiler alert, you run into Alan after the first boss battle and you pull him out of the in-between, I believe is what they call it. And so right now I'm pretty early in and by pretty early, I mean, I'm seven hours in. Um, Hmm. I'm playing as Alan, but you're playing in New York. And so you're kind of like trying to piece together what happened in New York and you're finding manuscript pages of the book that you wrote that is walking you through this. But Alan doesn't remember writing the book. The storytelling is it's sure there's holes in it because there's holes in every major video game plot line. It's it's a thing. There's holes. If you look at anything close enough, you're going to poke holes in it. Graphics are amazing. The sound design is absolutely beautiful. mm, Everything about it's just a joy. Can I ask a question on that? Because I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this is the thing. Like, this is I. Everybody's like, "Oh, Alan Wake, so good, so good." And I, I, I believe them. I just, I just, I don't play. But isn't the premise that Alan Wake is writing this story? Yes, of this? and in this one, it's kind okay. of the same way too. But he doesn't have any recollection of writing it because it kind of feels and or seems like there's a an evil Alan Wake that's also writing things where this Alan Wake oh, is trying to like wow. correct what's been written to change the story. Interesting. And so as you're playing with Alan and you get to like certain scenes, you'll uncover clues. And as you like, when you hit, I'm going to call it the back button because I don't know what it's actually called. You go into, I believe it's called the mind's eye and you can like start piecing together pieces of the puzzle and stuff. And like, it'll be like <clears throat> your CSI big ass, uh, like cork board where you're putting strings in between yeah. things and you can yeah. move things around and it'll rearrange what's actually in the world itself. So then you can explore that version of the world after you like rearrange things which unlocks more clues and more hints and things like that. It is, it's 
superb huh. at this point. I am wow. I'm loving every minute of it that I'm spending with it. Wow. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's it's uh, super well done. And again, Remedy is knocked out of the park. I I was yeah. kind of out on Remedy. I shouldn't say out, but after not Control, because I haven't played Control, and I hate to say that out loud. Uh, Quantum Break? Was Quantum that, Break. Yeah, Quantum yeah. Break. The, like They had 15-minute yeah. live-action cutscenes where it was just like, what am I watching this shit for? And it got to be kind of annoying. Yeah. This one does have live action cutscenes in it as well. But I think the longest one I've seen so far has only been like three to four minutes. And so mm. it doesn't really take you out of the game as far as, as Quantum Break did, which is it, it took me pretty far to the game with Quantum Break. But these ones are done really, really well. Um, everything about mm. this game so far that I've played, I've just I've I've been enamored with. And wow. I'm so thankful that they put this game out. I love yeah. the first and I'm That's loving awesome. the second. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see what happens next week at the Game Awards. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it'll do it because I've got a feeling Boulder's Gate so. 3 will do it because I everybody so worships too. Boulder's Gate because it's Boulder's Gate and I get it, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Yeah. It's just a very innovative game that is done really fantastically. Yeah. It's too bad. I feel like 2023 has been just a, a phenomenal year for it's been a for huge releases. Huge game for, or huge year for games. Like everything they keep putting out yeah. is just outstanding. Yeah, and I, I, I know a lot of people like mention other years like, oh, we've had other. I honestly don't remember a year like this. I don't either. And it's <clears throat> again, just in between like huge AAA titles that are coming out, like even an Alan Wake that is 13 years in the making, Diablo 4 that is six, seven years in the making as well. Like big games with big periods of pause. Bald, Baldur Gate 3. Baldur Gate 3. Again, another 15 years in the making yeah. type of a thing with yeah. that. Like there were just big releases coming out that they have got absolutely dialed in locked in that are playing fantastically minimalistic bugs and then we've got a slew of just i'm gonna call them triple a indie titles on top of it as well that are just making yeah. this like it's been a wonderful year to be a gamer yeah it really has it's crazy uh anything else you've been playing um i do want to give a little bit of love to overwatch right now Oh. Which I haven't done much of for Overwatch 2, but they just released two of the absolute stupidest skins known to mankind. And I adore both of them for all the right and wrong reasons. They're very, very pricey, but I convinced myself that I have spent money on dumber things. So I bought both <laughs> of the skins, one of which is Arissa, and she is a giant rubber duck. And it's incredible. And the other uh, one is a Zenyatta, and he's in like a full shower cap. And he's got like a bathrobe on and a towel around his waist. Oh and instead of the orbs that he normally juggles, they're all squeaking little rubber duckies. And <laughs> as you throw them, they make the rubber duck squeak. And the first time that oh I played gosh. as him, I had tears running down my face. I laughed so hard because of the <laughs> squeaking rubber duckies. And when you reload, they all squeak as well. Like you reload. Oh goes, my gosh. E -e 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 of the reloading squeaky ducks. <laughs> and I damn near peed myself. So I just have oh to give that a small little shout out because it made my day a lot better. That's awesome. Yeah, so That's stupid awesome. and so awesome at the same time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the show because we don't have Mike here and we don't have Tales of the eShop. So dang it. Uh, I know. So, so sad for you. Uh, so before we head out, how can people find you on social media? Uh, you can follow me at BNow23 on the old Twitter machine if it's still around after Elon Musk's meltdown yesterday. <laughs> did you see that? Uh, and listen, yeah, I did see Jesus. that. Yeah, that was crazy. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. It's, again, who knows? Maybe it won't be there much longer. Well, but saying that for follow us. Now. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, so you can follow us at Gamerheads Pod. You can follow me uh, on Twitter as well at Nintendoraj. You can also follow us on Blue Sky at Gamerheads Podcast. And also, I'm going to say this again. Follow us on twitch.tv slash Gamerheads Podcast because we will be streaming live going forward next week. And then every week after that, we're going to be streaming live at Thursdays from 8 30 central time next week will be earlier because of the game awards but uh after that'll be 8 30 central time and uh you can catch us live and and if it goes well we got a lot of people watching we'll probably even ha add a segment of like listener questions or something like that or yeah who knows i, I don't know phil we'll see maybe we'll my nails done before next week 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'll have a new computer uh, too. Maybe the camera will be better. Oh yeah, oh yeah. New computer. This will be this. See, look at look at all the fun things that are going to happen next week. So, Phil. I want to say thank you so much for joining us this week. It was really fun having this chat with you, and I'm glad that you're back. I'm happy to be at the glink, out of the glink, the clink, and drinking actual beer <laughs> instead of toilet beer. And it's also been wonderful to talk to you. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, Mike will be back with us next week. Uh, and uh, listeners, thank you for giving us a listen. If you like what you hear, give us a five star review. At your favorite place that you listen to the podcast, <laughs> uh, I'll leave uh, I'll leave two links to Apple and to Spotify. Uh, and if you listen to either of those, our podcasts on either of those two platforms, please leave us a review. We want to hear what you have to say about the show. Until next week, week everyone, stay safe and game on, and we'll see you at the Game Awards. Bye. Take care, everybody. <laughs>